Matthew 13, verse 24, we read, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did you not know that there's seed in the field from where has it has it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servants said unto him, Will you that then we go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up all, also the wheat. Let both grow forth until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will gather the reapers, gather together the first tares, bind them in bundles, and burn them, and gather the wheat into my barn. A wonderful story about this world, about our world today. And you have good wheat. You have good wheat that comes from the seed, Jesus Christ, being the good man sowing the good seed in his field. Of course, everything belongs to the Lord. And so, but the Lord's the one that, send, that sows the good seed, brings forth wheat, which brings forth fruit. Notice it's the Lord has done this. Well, there's also an enemy that sows his seed, which is the tares. And uh, I think it's darnel, uh, you know, it is probably what it is, which looks a lot like wheat. In fact, it'll grow up and, and until it actually goes to seed in the mature level, about the time of harvest, you can't really tell the difference. But once it, it's mature, then you can easily identify the difference. And notice, you know, it, it, amazing, you can, you can know a, a tree or a, a bush or wheat by its fruit. If it's true wheat, then it'll bring forth true wheat kernels rather than the darnel, uh, which some of ver ver various portions of darnel are poisonous. So interesting. Uh, wait till the end. Don't be trying to, you know, go through and uh, subvert or destroy the works of the enemy. It doesn't mean that we don't identify uh, false teachers or false prophets or churches that are teaching things that are heretical. No, we, we're to call them out. And, and thankfully, we have great ministries out there, uh, such as um, the Brian Call and Lighthouse Ministries. That's kind of their focus, is that of, of calling out and pointing out. They're not necessarily, they're not bashing or, or trying to destroy other so-called works, but they are, are definitely calling out what they're teaching and the things that, that are contrary to the Word of God. And I think that's very important. But we leave the harvest up to the Lord. It's His, it's his work, it's His world. And if you're a Christian, then you belong to him. And, you know, even in the church, Matthew 18 tells us if there is a problem, you know, we, we how to go to it. You go to that person one-on-one. -on -one. Next thing, you, you go be with another witness. Next thing, and eventually you go before the church. And then eventually, you know, there's a, there's a form of excommunication if, if they're just not uh, wanting to uh, adhere to the word of God. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the worldwide situation. And there are, there are lots of tears out there. There's going to be a tell. Jesus again comes again for us. And the rapture of the church. And man, I'll tell you what, it's going to be instantaneous, isn't it? The true church is going to go up and be with the Lord. And so they shall ever be with the Lord. And the tears are going to be down here during the seven-year tribulation. And as it says, they will... They, they will be burnt up, but we will be in the Lord's barn. Isn't that great? So we need to be discerning in these last days. We also need to be gentle because someone that, that may have some characteristic problems or whatever, 
uh, but God's still working in their hearts. They're still a, new, a true believer. We need to be careful that we don't destroy them. God will deal with it. And that's a great thing. We don't need to um, worry about uh, dealing with the, the enemy. All we need to do <laughs> personally is spend as much time seeking Jesus encouraging the body of Christ around us. It's so simple, isn't it? Well, God bless you. I pray that you know Jesus. That's the most important thing. And of course, Matthew chapter 7 kind of talks about this whole thing in a different level. He said, you know, he, he calls them out uh, because they, uh, they, they say they're Christians, they're doing all these wonderful uh, things, uh, but yet the fruit the real fruit. It says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but they that does the will of my Father in heaven. And of course, the will, the fruit, fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, self-control. Are those things evident in my life? That's what we need to ask. Is the real, is there really love? Or are we angry and, and envious or, or holding bitterness and, and unforgiving? See, that's not the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And we do forgive because we have been forgiven so much. Amen. And so he says, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied uh, in your name and, and done all these wonderful things? And, and basically, Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work in iniquity. Uh, you, are, you, you are only externally, you know, acting as though you're a Christian, but yet the reality is your whole, there, there's no real relationship. I don't, I don't know you. you. You don't let me come into that place, those quiet, those secret places, dark places of your heart. And, and so I never knew you depart from me. I hope you know Jesus today. And and we all need to ask that, the Lord the question, you know, search my heart. You know, it, am I doing things for the wrong reasons? Am I doing... Uh, the right things and, and, and those things and, and, and simply Lord I, you know the main thing has to be Jesus he has to be our he has to be our first love and we need to love him supremely and we need to be you know allowing the Holy Spirit just to check our hearts and keep us on track God bless you as you serve Jesus Christ today